Hello, everyone. Welcome to Barca News. It is January 12, 2024, and referees have cleared Barcelona in the Enrique Sereda case. Also, John Laporta, Xavi Hernandez, and Deco have met in Saudi Arabia to discuss the possible signing of a midfielder in a winter transfer market. And finally, it's reported that the club have rejected two offers for Mika Faye. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Mo and as I announced earlier today, from now on I will be making two videos a day because lately there's been a lot of news so it's much easier to break it down in two videos rather than making one very long one and bore all of you. And also I've also been noticing that whenever I finish a video more news comes up and it's, uh, and it's too long to wait until the next day so I'd rather make a second video later in the day in order to capture any new news it comes out after my initial video. So having said that, if you haven't checked out my first video of today yet, make sure to go to the channel and check it out. Lots of interesting news in that video. Now let's dive right into the news because referees have cleared Barcelona in the Enrique Sneireira case. Now for those of you who have been watching the channel for quite some time, I've been talking about the uh, Enrique Sneireira case. Pretty much what happened was Barcelona hired the former referee, Jose Maria Enrique Sneireira, as a consultant for the club and so, which is someone to help Barcelona with refereeing reports. This is something very standard in La Liga. All the clubs do it. However, while Enrique Sereda was working for Barcelona, he was also one of the many vice presidents that the committee of referee had. So this, of course, prompted the prosecutor's office, office in Spain to launch an investigation to see whether Barcelona had bribed referees through the hiring of Jose Maria Enrique Sereda as a consultant while he was still one of the vice presidents of the committee of referees. Well, after many, many months of investigation, the prosecutor's office has found no evidence that Barcelona bribed any, any referees through Jose Maria Enrique Stegreira. And now the investigation has switched course to instead try to figure out whether the former presidents of Barcelona actually were stealing money from the club through Jose Maria Enrique Stegreira, which was through the overpayment of the reports that Jose Maria Enrique Stegreira was producing for Barcelona because that's one way that these presidents could have been stealing money. Because, for example, if the report costs, let's say, 10,000 euros, you pay, you put it on the books that you paid 100,000 euros, you pay him 10,000 and you pocket 90,000. Of course, all these numbers are just for example purposes. These are not the actual numbers, but that's what the investigators are now investigating because, again, no evidence that Barcelona bribed any referees. Well, now more developments have come up in the case. La Vanguardia, which is the media outlet in Spain, has now revealed that referees actually have cleared Barcelona in the Enrique Sereda case. And you might say, what referees are we talking about? Well, it's the referees that the police in Spain had um, had interviewed. Now, when these allegations first came up, they were saying that Barcelona was were giving cash to Jose Maria Enrique, Enrique Sereda, and then he was making those payments to the referees in order to bribe them. And all the referees during that era that Jose Maria Enrique Sereda was hired by Barcelona and was also the vice president of the committee of referees. They were all interviewed, and La Vanguardia has gotten their hands or gotten a hold of all these interviews, and all these referees have said that Jose Maria and Rex Lereda had absolutely no influence in the promotion and demotion system. Now, you might ask, well, how is this relevant that they said that Jose Maria and Rex Lereda had no influence over promotion and demotion? Well, it matters because Again, when the case first was opened, they said that Barcelona was giving cash payments to referees through Enrique Stereda. The investigation revealed no evidence of this. So then the judge in charge of the case, he said, well, I have a new theory. Maybe it wasn't cash payments. Maybe it was through the promotion and demotion of referees or Barcelona with promised referees in a second division to be promoted to the first division in exchange for them ruling in favor of Barcelona or referees in the first division who would rule against Barcelona, they would be demoted to the second division because, of course, referees in the first division make a lot more money than the second division. So that's what the judge was suggesting, that maybe that's what Jose Maria Enrique Sereda was doing, promoting and demoting referees in favor of Barcelona. But all the referees that have been interviewed have said that he had no influence on a promotion and demotion of referee. So that completely rules out the hypothesis of this judge that Barcelona somehow bribed referees 
through this promotion and the motion system. Now, I did talk about the Enrique Snyder case in a previous video. I think it was two days ago where supposedly El Confidencial came up with this huge exclusive that supposedly Barcelona had bribe referees by taking them to dinner and karaoke because it was revealed that the son of Negreira had taken some referees on dinner and karaoke, which is absolutely stupid. And it's pretty much just another desperate attempt to try to dig up evidence since the prosecutor's office, the treasury in Spain, UEFA, La Liga have all been unable to come up with any evidence. So now these media outlets who are pro Real Madrid are now coming up with their own evidence that somehow taking referees to karaoke is now constitutes bribery and make no mistake this is no coincidence that we're talking about Enrique Snyder right now after there there's been a silence for many many weeks because after all there is the Spanish Super Cup final in two days against Real Madrid and well bad luck for these pro Real Madrid media outlets because now we have this report where referees have all said the same thing that Jose Maria Enrique Snyder had absolutely no power over promotion and demotion now speaking of the Spanish Super Cup John Laporta was seen celebrating the win with the Royal Saudi family. He went out with the Royal Saudi family to dinner. There's plenty of videos of him on social media, you know, singing Barcelona songs, dancing to music, very happy, celebrating with the Royals or the Saudi Royal family. Uh, I can't put these videos, of course, on my on this uh, in this video because of copyrights. Otherwise, my channel will be shut down. But if you want to see it, you could definitely go on Twitter. Just uh, look up La Porta Celebration and you'll see the Barcelona president very happy celebrating with the Saudis. And this dinner has now given room, uh, given a lot of speculation that maybe La Porta was also meeting with the Saudis in order to drum up more funds for Barcelona. Now, this is a possibility, of course, but there's also the possibility that it was simply a dinner. And there is a possibility that La Porta could maybe have talked to them about new investments because after all, the Barcelona president has been hard at work to try to get more money. Of course, on one hand, Laporta is trying to find new investors to buy the Varsa vision and get the 40 million euros that Barcelona didn't get from the German investment fund Libero. And on the, and on the other hand, Laporta has also been hard at work trying to find new sponsors for the club to increase the revenues of the club in order to pay off the club's debt. Of course, the new board has already been able to uh, get 28 new sponsors in these past two years, which is a huge accomplishment for the board. And Laporta has not stopped. He's been hard at work to find more investors. He spent a week in uh, in Dubai, in the Middle East also, um, this past, uh, at the end of December, beginning of January. So maybe he did speak to the Saudis, we'll see, because of course Barcelona need those 40 million euros that they didn't get from Libero. And as soon as they get those 40 million euros, they will be able to sign a midfielder during this winter transfer market. Now, speaking of the midfielder, Xabi, Deco and Laporta all met in Saudi in order to discuss the signing. As I mentioned before, Barcelona have made the final decision that they will sign a midfielder during a winter transfer market on loan in order to cover Gabi's injury, who will be out until the summer. And of course, this meeting was in order to discuss possible names, discuss the profile of the player. As I told you before, the board was kind of divided on what kind of profile of a player they want, whether they want someone more of an interior who can also play as a pivot or whether they want someone who is a box-to-box -box midfielder, you know, a physical, strong pivot who's just defensive and not so much offensive as well. Um, otherwise, well, this meeting, they discussed the profile of the player that they want, they discussed what kind of possible names are on the market that Barcelona could afford. And one thing that seems that they all uh, agreed on, Laporta, Deco, and Xabi, is whoever Barcelona signed has to be someone with experience, international experience. This cannot be someone young, someone development. They need someone with experience that can come in, fill in the role on day one. He has to have good eye for the ball, and he has to have some physicality, of course, in order to help with the defensive duties in the midfield. We'll have to see who will Barcelona end up signing. Again, this all depends on Barcelona receiving the 40 million euros from Libero. If they don't, there won't be enough space on the, uh, on the wage bill to sign anyone, so they have to receive the 40 million euros in order to sign anyone. Now, one more bit of news because it's reported that Barcelona have rejected two offers from Mika Faye so far. Now, Mika Faye, the 19-year-old Senegalese center back who Barcelona signed uh, in the summer, he's considered as one of the most promising center backs right now in Europe. He's been playing with Barca Athletic, and despite being in Barcelona only for six months, he's already garnering a lot of attention from other clubs. I told you that Girona had been scouting him for quite some time. There's also other clubs interested in him, including Chelsea and Dortmund. And while it's now been revealed that Barcelona have rejected two offers 
from both Alaves and Girona. Now, it seems that Alaves made a loan offer to Barcelona for this remainder of the season, which Barcelona rejected. Girona were also sent a proposal to Barcelona where they're hoping to either take Mika Faya on loan with an option to buy or maybe on a permanent transfer. And Barcelona also rejected because Barcelona have no intention of losing this gem, this absolute gem that we have in the academy right now. Now, all can change in the summer, of course, because Mika Faye's agent has informed Barcelona that the player has many offers and they expect to receive concrete written offers in the summer. And the agent has told Barcelona that if Mika Faye does not get like first team minutes, then they could look to leave somewhere else, even though Mika Faye prioritizes staying in Barcelona. Anyways, that is all the news for tonight. Again, I made an earlier video uh, today, so make sure you check it out. Lots of good news in there. I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night or good morning wherever you are in the world. And as always, peace, Garza.